Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are working on hand building some rafters for the breezeway to connect the house and the garage together. Struggled a little bit this morning. I think I have things figured out now, but I wanna show you what I'm looking at in case uh, you decide to do something similar on your build. The previous video to this one, if you haven't watched that, I'll encourage you to go back and watch that first and then come back to this video. I'll link it up in the corner. I think this will make more sense if you know what has gone on up to this point with the breezeway. But these rafters are really challenging for me um, with the ridge board and the bird mouth cut at the bottom. I think I have it figured out, but let me show you what I'm dealing with and the issue that I'm running into with the framing that we did on the previous video. So here you go, guys. These brackets I set on the last video, you can see these lag screws with hex washers. That's what's causing my problem right there. Because I want to carry the consistent theme of the steel overhang panels throughout the build, I need to run a steel panel straight back here, which requires F-channel to be ran along the timber all the way across. Well, with these washers and screws in the way, I had to extend my overhang out an extra six inches to get it to drop down below that. So unfortunately, my timber... The only thing showing will be everything below this, which I don't know, is probably four inches, maybe three, four inches, five inches. Uh, would have been nice to have the majority of this show, but that caused a problem. The second thing that we had to figure out was the rafter. That's the first rafter that we built, had it set in there. Uh, let me show you how I did that. Very minimal math that I used to, to figure this out. Uh, this was pretty much all built out of my head. I had very minimal um, guidance from the blueprints like I have had in the past. So it was a little more of a struggle, but let me show you how we got this rafter figured out. The first thing I wanted to do was figure out my roof pitch because then I can make the majority of my cuts on my rafters. So let me show you how I did that. For my hieroglyphics on how I figured the roof pitch out, I took a level line off the top of my ridge board and then I drew a line from my ridge board down to where my rafter was going to sit on this timber with the bird mouth cut. So I took the top of that and I came back and this is where the top of my board's gonna be and you put your square on this level line here and then you can look down at where the line runs through the common line on your speed square. So common is the bottom and you can see, maybe you can see the line that runs through. It's just a little over four and a half, maybe four and three quarters on the roof pitch. So that's my pitch that I need to cut my rafter angles at, both the angle here and the seat cut down there. Here's my first rafter. So knowing that my pitch was about four and three quarters, I could make this cut, I could make my plunge cut angle, and I could make my fascia board, my fascia cut angle as well. The only thing left I had to do was figure out how deep I wanted my plunge cut to go. And then from that point, you come straight back for the seat cut. So I had to be above these, those bolts down there. And what I ended up doing is starting with an inch and a half deep plunge cut here. That made my overhang or forced my overhang to be 16 inches long before I could get underneath those bolts on the back side of that bracket. So I increased this by half inch, went to a two inch deep cut. That allowed me to pull my overhang back to 12 inches, which will match the rest of the overhangs on both the buildings and will allow my soffit panel to come and run underneath that bottom bolt down there. So that's how I figured this out. It took me two boards uh, to get this set. And now that I have my pattern, so to speak, I can use this board, cut the rest of my rafters. Uh, because we took the time and made everything square, it should work out. And uh, we'll show you how we're doing these cuts on a, the next rafter that we cut. So that way you can kind of get an idea of how it works. So I'll show you how I'm cutting these rafters now that I kind of know what I'm doing. 
The first thing I'm gonna do is cut a four and three quarter pitch, which is about a 22 degree pitch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. And then I know my length is 50 and three quarter from the long point here. Or 50 and three eighths actually, sorry. So I'm gonna mark that pivot point here and cut the same angle, 22 degrees roughly, and that's where my fascia board will be. So then my next item is the bird mouth, and I know from the peak down to the timber, I'm in 37 and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my 22 degree mark here. So that'll be my plunge cut, and I know I need to go up from that two inches, because that's what my first one ended up working out to be. So I mark it at two inches, and then I take my square, and I line it up with my cut here, and draw the line this way, that'll be my seat cut. So this piece will be gone. So I'll cut this along this line and this line and that'll be my notch where she sets on the timber. Let's cut this and go put it up, see how she looks. too many of these rafters I want to get these uh, brackets set for these two middle rafters I really fell in love with the Simpson strong tie joist hangers or rafter hangers when we did the porch build I'm using the RR-R brackets which are really nice i think it's a better way to connect your rafters to your ridge board as opposed to putting the board up here and either nailing from the back side in to the end or toe nailing from the side these just seem like a much sturdier connection put a couple of nails in the top nails in the side and you got four on each side here you have two diamonds here so you can line and center up your bracket and then these brackets at the top have notches so you can put a bracket on the opposite side of this one and it'll be centered just like that one. So it makes it really nice. You can center both sides right across from one another and that makes tying your rafters in so easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one on here. And I'm just using these joist hanger nails to tie these in. Okie dokie. 
both those are in, so now we can start tying in our rafters. One thing I learned when we were doing the over roofing on the porches is these ridge boards, it's real easy to push and pull them as you're putting your rafters in. So I'm just gonna get a measurement here. 39 and a half. Sixteenth over, so it's got to go my way just a little bit when I nail this. Now my rafter tails, I do a little bit different. It's perfectly acceptable to toenail these things in, but I use these timber lock screws. Run those down. Seems to work pretty good as long as you don't have a knot in this, which it doesn't look like we do. The first rafter, all I did is put some three and an eighth inch screws, uh, number 10 structural screws in and tacked it to the wall. So that's not going anywhere. This one, we have our timber lock screw, which make sure you drive those flush if you use them and pre-drill. What you guys don't see in this video is I had to add some purlin, some drop-in purlins in on this framing. The blueprints called for the rafters to be four foot on center, so I just needed one in the middle of this roofing system. And, and that's fine, it can support the weight. However, the OSB was just too spongy. And after further investigation reading in my the notes in my blueprints, it does say in there that all roofing needs to have purlins two foot on center at a minimum. So I had to add two purlins to each side. We just dropped them in and toenailed them in and that helped to support the OSB to make this roof nice and sturdy. But otherwise, this was leftover 5 8 zip sheathing that we had from the house. So the install process was no different. We just nailed it off with some uh, two and a half inch ring shank nails and finished it up. It was a pretty pretty easy job. Uh, all in all. And with the breezeway just being a fuzz over eight feet in between the garage and house walls, uh, I didn't have to cut any of the OSB off on the ends. It, it worked out really well. We just ripped them down the middle because it was a little over four feet. I had to use a little over half of one and then a, a partial sheet and it worked out nice, made the job pretty easy all in all. Couldn't get my nail gun up underneath the overhang on the very top under the garage, so I just went ahead and put some three inch screws in there. That should do it. Halfway done, get the other side done yet tonight, hopefully. Guys, I think we're gonna save the steel roofing install for the next video. I'm in the editing process right now and I don't want this video to be too long. So I hope you enjoyed the framing and the sheathing on this breezeway. And I look forward to seeing you on the steel roofing install. That's all I have for you today. We'll see you on the next video.